Hi there, this is John Lebensold for KillerPHP.com and today what I'm going to be doing is a very short introduction, a seven part, so maybe it's not so short, introduction to jQuery. Uh, we're going to be looking at how you can get jQuery set up on your own local website, how to use Google's content delivery network to speed things up. Uh, then we're going to be looking at events in jQuery, making some really cool animations and buttons and menus. And then we're going to look at the server side. So we're going to try and incorporate PHP into our jQuery uh, project. Finally, looking at something called JSON. Uh, not the person, it's actually a interchange format like XML, but far cooler. And then we're going to finish this by creating some objects in PHP and then passing them along to jQuery and seeing what we can make of that. So this is the first part. We're going to look at how you can actually get jQuery installed on or included in part of a project. So I've got this, this uh, domain right here called static. Uh, this is my own local machine. And for the first uh, couple of videos, you won't actually need to have a web server. We're going to be doing this primarily from our disk locally and then as we start using PHP then we're gonna have to move away from simply using HTML to also using PHP but since this is killer PHP I'm sure you're already familiar with that stuff so you might have also noticed there's a toolbar up here that uh, doesn't come with Firefox it's called the De web developer toolbar it's handy but we're not going to be using it for this tutorial set however I do want to touch on this little icon down here which is a little bug and this is uh, firebug and you can get firebug at uh, the add-ons website for uh, for Firefox so if you just do a search for firebug into the mighty Google search engine and go to getfirebug.com you can grab yourself a copy of firebug and it's really handy for doing JavaScript debugging and also development because you can stop at any point and profile or figure out what variable content is actually appearing on your website. So we'll look at that as well. So let's start by just getting jQuery. Obviously, the first place you would probably look is jQuery.com. And uh, this is the jQuery website. On the right over here, you'll see that there is a download link for jQuery. You'll notice that there are two different versions that they talk about here. They've got a production version and a development version. And for our purposes, we're going to be using the production version. And Minified and gzipped, basically what that means is that the, uh, the jQuery library has been compressed down to its smallest possible form so that it's nice and light for uh, your users to download it. So we're just going to click on the download link for jQuery and we're going to be taken to a Google code page. Click on that link and you can see that it's already downloading it. So you'll see jQuery appear on my desktop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and drag it to, for me it's my sites folder, into the static folder. Now this is the folder that I'm using for my particular project and if I go back to static here you'll see that I don't have anything except for the jQuery file. In order to use the jQuery minified version we need to create some HTML and the HTML is going to make reference to the jQuery file that we've just downloaded from jQuery.com. So if I click on this let's just get a sense of what it looks like. You'll see that there's uh, a whole bunch of what looks like a lot of garbage and this is the compressed version of jQuery so you're not going to be able to make heads or tails of it but luckily the documentation exists on docs.jquery.com and we're going to be looking a bit at how we can actually use this wonderful library. So to start off with I'm going to be using a text editor and my text editor of choice is bbedit and you can of course use Notepad or anything else, TextMate, Text Wrangler, uh, Notepad++, they're all fantastic. And I'm going to start by creating a new file. So I'm just going to say File, New Text Document. 
And we're going to start by just creating a very simple HTML structure with a head and a body. And I'm going to put in the necessary doc type information, which I have a hard time remembering, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm just going to I'm just going to grab it from here. We're going to be using the XHTML transitional doc type. I'm just going to copy that and paste that in here. And that should be it. So now I'm just going to hit save. And we're going to put this file into my static folder. So I'm just going to call this getting jQuery.html. We're going to go back to Firefox. If I refresh this, you'll see that now there's a file that shows up called getting jQuery.html. If I click on it, I don't see anything. However, if I put a header one in the body tag, under or within the body tag saying getting jQuery, hit save, then we're actually going to see some text, which is great. Now, now we need to actually reference the jQuery library. And in order to do that, we just need to use the script tag. So I'm just going to write script type equals text slash JavaScript, src. And here we're going to be referencing this file. And I'm just going to paste that in. And we'll just close that script tag. Actually, we're going to do it this way. It's just another way of closing a tag. Hit save, refresh it again, and we shouldn't see any changes, but jQuery should have been loaded. Not very exciting yet, but we're going to uh, be using this a lot in the tutorials to come. So because this tutorial is really quite short, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you some of the logging features of Firebug that you might find me using later on. So in order to use jQuery, all you need to do is have some JavaScript on the page, and then you're good to go. So I'm going to say a script tag with new type text slash JavaScript. I'm going to open this up. And ideally, when you're creating your JavaScript, you don't want to put it in the middle of your website. You want to keep it in a separate file, ID, or at least, at the very least, at the top of the page. So let's say I wanted to get the header one here, and I wanted to somehow do something with it using jQuery. Well, if I was using this with traditional JavaScript, I would have to make sure that my JavaScript runs after the H1 has been read by the browser. Let me give you a quick example of that.